Hi everyone, so I was taking my MR2 on its first ever decent road trip and then this happened. I can hear a bit of water dripping now. Oh, so you got a gasket gun. Blown head? I would have thought so. Okay. It's So talking to that mechanic, uh, while he suspected it was a blown head gasket, he didn't have the time to check or approve it and uh, he recommended that I go on eBay and buy one of these head gasket chemical testing kits where you stick this in the top of the radiator overflow tank, add this blue liquid and on a petrol vehicle it will turn yellow if exhaust emissions are detected in the radiator fluid. Uh, and that means that, that the head gasket uh, will, have, um, will have breached. So we're going to try that now and see what happens just waiting for the car to warm up. Alright, so it's been about 8 minutes. Uh, the instructions recommend 5 and it is not changing color at all. That's supposed to be yellow if it's a head gasket and it is just the same blue that we had to begin with. So it's not the head gasket based on this. Okay then, so now that we know that based on chemical testing there is nothing wrong with the head gasket, we change our attention to that of leaks. Now my next step was to remove the plastic front lid, uh, that was easy enough, it just clips out. The next step after that was to remove the front lining surround, there's about uh, 10 plastic clips to pop and then that just slides right out, no trouble. And then the frunk itself, it's just a big bucket like that and there are four 10 millimeter bolts holding that on, um, just one, two under the spare tire, three, four at the front of the frunk and then the whole lot lifts out and we have a filthy under hood, uh, look at this. This is what happens, I know I've said this before, I'll say it again, when you leave an MR2 parked outside under a tree too long. But anyway, um, a, uh, a, a, an MR2 uh, mechanic who's, who's internet famous in the UK, his name is Dick Sloan, uh, when I told him the problem he said straight away, um, near side radiator, they always leak, it's an MR2 thing, uh, get a new one off eBay. So uh, I've gone straight to the radiator. Uh, this is it here. It's one of these thin millennial aluminium radiators with plastic tanks at either end, which are prone to uh, leaking, I know from past experience. So I had a look around. Uh, I didn't know what near side means. That's not uh, terminology in New Zealand. It means uh, the side of the vehicle uh, that is parked uh, closest to the curb when parked. So on a, a British vehicle, a right-hand drive vehicle, that means the left side of the car. And sure enough, we have these uh, patches coming from the near side of the radiator. There's no way for me to tell how old or new those are. Maybe they've been there for years, um, but they don't exist on the driver's side. Anyway, when I follow that patch on the drip tray, Eventually those old stains turn wet. So I don't have the smoking gun yet. I'm not sure exactly where the leak's coming from, uh, but it's almost certainly um, some kind of seam on the near side of the radiator. Uh, the pipes themselves, by the way, uh, those are the pipes, rubber leading to metal, disappearing under that strut and then turning back to rubber again. Same again, metal turning to rubber, turning to metal, disappearing under the air conditioning and power steering, and then connecting to rubber again. Uh, no evidence of any leaks on any of those. So it looks like the next step's gonna be get on eBay, get a new radiator. As an aside, here's the close-up of the dirt that accumulates under the front cover. 
Now, the vehicle was only leaking slowly, so I was still driving it around quite a bit, and the leaking got a lot worse a lot faster, and I got stranded. Jesus Christ, it's absolutely pissing out. It's time to take the radiator out. Uh, step one's going to be removing these metal brackets that support the plastic frunk. So uh, this has got to come out, that's got to come out. There's just four 10 millimeter bolts holding them in, nice and easy. Next is going to be to take these electric fans out. They're actually mounted as one in one giant plastic mold. Uh, just the two 10 millimeter bolts, one there, and another one that's not rusty here. Uh, there's none at the bottom, so then uh, it should just pop out. Uh, making sure to remove that electrical connector and that electrical connector which feeds through to this motor here. Uh, then uh, that should just lift straight up and that will give us full access to the, uh, the radiator here. Uh, I'm going to fill it with water again and see, uh, hopefully, if I can see exactly where uh, this leak's coming from. Okay, so the fans are off, and if we get down, looking at the bottom here, it's taken some pretty significant damage over the years. Those fins are not straight. Um, there's a little bit of water leaking out still, even though the car hasn't driven in a few days. Um, I'm going to fill up uh, the radiator fluid again and turn the engine on and see if we can actually find the source of the leak properly. All right, we've got our smoking gun. I've let the engine heat up uh, just at idle only, so uh, to mitigate engine damage, um, all the way to operating temperature. The uh, thermostat has opened up, so we're getting um, circulation to the radiator. And now that it's reached operating temperature and pressure, look at that. And while driving uh, at its worst in that video earlier, I reckon I was losing um, probably about a gallon a minute. Yeah, probably probably a liter every 15 seconds. Uh, but at idle, it's down to a drip every every second. Now we can begin to remove the radiator itself, starting by removing the four times 12 millimeter bolts, two on each side of the radiator. Um, because of the length of time my vehicle has been parked outside, they were rusted nearly solid, so I was sure to use lots of penetrating lubricant uh, so I don't snap those bolts clean off. All right then, the next step is to remove the two radiator hoses. So uh, there's some factory pipe clamps that you squeeze with pliers, pull forward, and then pull the radiator hose off. Same deal on this side. Uh, whenever I get the opportunity, uh, I throw the factory pipe clamps away. Uh, they're really nasty. In many cases, they um, contribute to the piercing of radiator hoses because they don't grip evenly. Uh, so I've thrown them in the trash and I've gone and got proper Jubilee clips. Uh, I've got 40 through to 55 millimeter size. They're a little bit big. I'd go a size down if I, if I did it again. So without further ado, That's it. Bit of bird splatter going on. Nasty. And it's as easy as that. There's no other bolts than uh, those ones uh, at the top, the two there and the two there holding it on. And then it comes clean out. So uh, unlike other vehicles, there's absolutely no need to take uh, the front bumper off and there is no need to take the uh, dust tray at the bottom off. There's quite a few filaments to sweep away though. Uh, what you get is these rubber mounts and they're just uh, 
gravity fed, they just sit on top of those. So uh, the new one came off eBay, this is it here. It was 40 British pounds, so about 50 American dollars, uh, including delivery. And that's it, brand new. So we're gonna fit that up. is gonna be making sure that the radiator of the new one sits correctly on those rubber mounts. Uh, oh yeah, there's a couple of locating dowels at the bottom of the, of the radiator, so you just gotta make sure those connect all the way home. That one's home. Home. We're done. So we're just going to torque up those Jubilee clips nice and tight. So having a think about it, I've decided to bleed the radiator before I bolt the radiator back in because uh, to bolt it all up, get the fans back in, get the frunk back in, and then find that it leaks is uh, obviously not ideal. So um, while it's just um, in situ with no other periphery uh, equipment bolted back in, I'm going to get that radiator bled uh, in case it leaks. Now um, at the factory, you'll get a, a spool of uh, two hoses which will be uh, cable tied together just here. Uh, I've cut the cable tie. Uh, opened that valve and I've run the hose up uh, nice and high, uh, higher than the overflow bottle at the back it needs to be and you've got to have the heaters on in the car um, on high while you're doing this. Uh, you get a second hose which I have connected to the radiator itself and opened up that valve there and again running that hose up nice and high, uh, higher than the overflow bottle and I've just got that uh, attached to the hood with electrical tape. So um, I went to Hellifords for some water, five liters of it. Uh, went on eBay and I got antifreeze uh, ethylene glycol type because uh, it was um, uh, a little bit cheaper than at Hellifords. Uh, so that's 10 liters altogether. Uh, the car needs 10.7, so I've got an uh, extra little bottle of uh, one liter of deionized water just there. Um, topping it up nice and slow um, and uh, to try and let those uh, air bubbles out while we do it. Uh, we're going to give it a crack now. So I'm fitting the radiator fan back in. Uh, the tricky part here is there's a couple of plastic locator tabs at the bottom corners of the radiator fan. You need to fit those into the location slots on the back of the radiator before bolting the top of the radiator fan in. Then we used lots of copper anti-seize grease to fit the bolts supporting the top of the radiator back in. Then we can reconnect the electrical plugs to the radiator fans. Then we can bolt in the frunk support brackets and then we can slide in the frunk itself. <laughs> 